here in the Gore Range. I'm on a northeast facing slope uh, near tree line. And uh, just to the right of us is a really large avalanche. Uh, broke 500 feet wide at the ground. So we're just digging a pit in an adjacent area to see what we see. Uh, we got some pretty snow, soft snow on top and then quite a slab here. It's like, gets to be pencil hard in places. And below that is just really weak snow. So uh, avalanches, there's about five feet of snow here. You get avalanches breaking five feet deep and uh, this area isn't really heavily wind loaded at all. So you put wind on top of that, you're looking at avalanches six, eight, even 10 feet deep. I'm at the crown of an avalanche in the Gore Range and uh, it's anywhere between three and five feet deep. Uh, average crown thickness is about four feet. But uh, it's probably happened within the last week. Um, we could tell by the amount of snow on the bed surface it wasn't yesterday. And uh, the important thing that we get out of this is we did some uh, stability tests or snowpack tests um, in an adjacent slope. And uh, the extended column test, we didn't get any results. But we know with this steep slab problem with this structure, that we're just gonna avoid these slopes. It really doesn't matter what our uh, snowpack tests tell us. Deep slab avalanches are generally hard to trigger. Snowpack tests are not an effective way to evaluate this problem as they will often give you hard or non-existent results. In addition to issues with snowpack tests, obvious signs of instability such as cracking and sounds of collapsing will usually not be present. The only way to minimize your risk to these avalanches is to avoid steep slopes shaded on our rows in this photo.